everyone, it's Pavlina from The Pavlina Show. I am here in New York City, and we're going to be talking to Dr. Matthew Harms, who is an assistant professor at Columbia University, and we're going to be talking any and everything about LGMD. Let's go check it out. Hi, my name is Matthew Harms, and I'm a neuromuscular specialist uh, at Columbia University and one of the physicians in the Muscular Dystrophy Association clinic there. And I wanted to tell you that if you suspect you might have limb girdle muscular dystrophy or you know you do and need uh, genetic testing, you should check out the website www.lgmd-diagnosis.org. So do you know what LGMD is? No, I'm no, sorry. No, I don't. No? No, sorry. Uh, no idea. I have no idea what that is. No, I don't. No, ma'am. Do you have, like, if you were to guess, what would you think it would be? Mm, fashion company? No, sorry. No. Mm, no. If you were to guess, what would you think it would be? I have no idea. Hey everyone, it's Pavlina from The Pavlina Show and I am here in New York City with Dr. Harms who is an assistant professor at Columbia University in the neurology department. How are you doing? Great. Uh, I've been here for about, I guess, 10 months now and uh, it's a great place to work. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Now, you are involved with LGMD. Now tell me about this. Yeah, so uh, LGMD stands for Limb Girdle Muscular Dystrophy. Yeah. And it's one of the subtypes of neuromuscular disease that I take care of in clinic and that I do research on in the laboratory. Uh, it's a disease that uh, causes muscle weakness. Um, oftentimes that comes on in various stages of life. So there are some forms that come on in childhood and some forms that come on in your teens and then other forms that don't come on until you're in your later in life. What I've learned is that a lot of people don't know about LGMD. So why do you think that is? Is it just because, you know, uninformed is not as in the media or? So I think um, one of the reasons is that it's not that common. So the number of people living with uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophy is smaller compared to other diseases that are on people's minds like Lou Gehrig's disease. So it's unusual for someone to have ever met somebody who has LGMD. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, until you really have a personal experience with someone who has the disease or see someone or get curious about it, you know, you may not learn about it. Who is probably going to get LGMD? Oh, is it like a okay. genetic thing or? So, um, so the limb girdle muscular dystrophies are by and large genetic. We don't know of any that aren't, essentially, and suspect that there are genetic causes for almost all of them. Yeah. So most of the time, um, limb girdle muscular dystrophy seems to strike out of nowhere because it's what we call a recessive disease in most cases. So that means you have to inherit a bad copy of one gene from mom and a bad copy of that same gene from dad in order to get the disease. So mom and dad each only have one bad copy and they're fine because all you need is one good copy. But then when they create a baby that ha is missing a good copy of the gene, uh, then the muscle surface of the muscle is weak and then over time as the muscle gets used then it starts to deteriorate and then the weakness comes on. So, um, so people, so by, because it's genetic, uh, it's hard to predict who's going to get it, and that's why it's uh, you know such a hard to um, hard to research disease because it just comes out of nowhere and you really kind of can't predict unless there's been someone else in the family who already has it, right. um, for example. Um, now, how is someone diagnosed with this? Like, what what is like the whole you know first steps and then everything? So, uh, so usually the first steps is that for a long time people don't get diagnosed. So they, uh, their parents maybe notice that they're not getting up out of a chair as well. Or if they're already active in sports, that their sports performance starts to drop off. And, and no one can kind of put their finger on why exactly it's happening, but that's kind of when the weakness is starting and maybe even the person hasn't noticed yet. Yeah. Then, um, you know, typically something happens. Uh, you know, they go on a family vacation and they're required to walk further than they usually do in their everyday life and they just can't do it. And then suddenly say, whoa, wait a second something's wrong here, uh, you know, like I'm 15 years old and I should be able to go up that flight of steps, but I can't, or um, I used to be able to pick up that my bike and put it over my head to carry it, you know, but I, now I can't, and what's that about? So oftentimes people then go to their pediatricians and their pediatricians say, well, I don't know, maybe some physical therapy will help, uh, send them to the physical therapist, they spend two or three months doing physical therapy and not getting better, yeah. then they go back to the doctor and then eventually they get referred to a neurologist who basically realizes that they have weakness. And oftentimes we'll then refer them on to a neuromuscular specialist like myself. So it's now possible to sequence 
all of the genes that we know about for limb girdle muscular dystrophy at one time. There's an actually a great website which is you know a really good source for really a resource for everyone to go to. You can take a quiz. Your doctor could take a quiz for you. Um, and it's lgmd-diagnose.org. Tell me about this website and everything you know people can do when they go on it. Right. So one of the th exciting things that's happened uh, in the limb girdle muscular dystrophy field is that some uh, patient-driven foundations have sprung up. Uh, focusing on one or several of the subtypes of limb girdle muscular dystrophy. So there's the Jane Foundation for people who have limb girdle muscular dystrophy type 2B, which is also uh, called Miyoshi myopathy. One of the great things is that those organizations all came together to create this lgmd-diagnosis.org website. Um, and uh, that is a portal to free genetic testing for people who have the disorder. So they have um, set it up so that a patient can go there, answer a quiz that basically confirms that they have limb girdle muscular dystrophy, and then puts them in touch with uh, the genetic sequencing lab, which makes all the arrangements to do the genetic testing. So it's really simple. They send out a consent form, it gets signed, then once that, once that goes back, then they send out a spit kit. The a spit kit literally is what it sounds like. People just spit in a tube and send it back. And then the genetic testing happens from there. Uh, my name is Aman Joshi. I am 39 and I was diagnosed in 2001, I believe. You know, it's, it's interesting because um, when I was first diagnosed, uh, they misdiagnosed me. Uh, I remember being at a friend's house and I couldn't tippy toe. And um, my friend's father is a physician and he said, um, you should really go get that checked out. So I had a muscle biopsy done. I went to see a couple of doctors, a neurologist, and they uh, came back with a diagnosis of polymyositis. I'm sure a lot of folks in my uh, position uh, have gone through that. Um, so polymyositis, I took steroids, took methotrexate, took all these other drugs that really didn't do anything for me. Uh, went back for a second muscle biopsy and came back polymyositis again. Uh, and then finally, because nothing was working, I went to Ohio State um, on the reference of another doctor. Uh, as I saw Jerry Mendel, and he did a third muscle biopsy, and that's when uh, I knew that I had uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophy type 2B. Um, but initially, my reaction, um, I was going through a lot in life. Uh, my father had just suffered uh, from a stroke. And so um, I wasn't really able to concentrate on myself. I just kind of figured I would uh, deal with whatever came uh, in the future. Um, but uh, initially it wasn't shock, it wasn't, uh, I think I was just kind of numb and um, just focusing on uh, other things that I had to do. You know, I was, I was a bit upset uh, with the mixed diagnosis, with the missed diagnosis, um, just because I, they put me on a heavy dose of prednisone for quite some time. And um, I got moon face, which makes you look like a chipmunk. Uh, and um, I got striations. Um, basically, I got all the side effects that you could from steroids without any of the benefits. And so I, I was a bit upset, but I, I knew that um, the doctors that were trying to diagnose me, uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophy type 2B and polymyositis, I believe under um, a muscle slide looks similar. And so it wasn't, uh, I wasn't so upset because I know people were trying to help. Um, it sucked that, you know, I was misdiagnosed, but I, I didn't really harbor any ill will. Yeah, the family was concerned. Um, I think they were more worried than I was. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I'm part of a, a really close-knit family. So my sister, my mom, um, they, they were, I think they were more upset than I was. Um, I, I basically took on the attitude that, you know, whatever may happen, whatever comes up, I'll deal with it as it comes. And so, um, yeah, I think I kind of had to be strong for my mom and my sister, uh, and that was kind of my mindset as well. Yeah, so it's interesting because uh, I think uh, someone with limb girdle muscular dystrophy, you have to adapt, right? And so um, in terms of affecting my life, I need a lot of help, um, and luckily for me, I have a great support system. Uh, my family is very helpful. I have the best friends in the world. Um, they'll. 
if there's a place that's not accessible, they'll literally carry me upstairs or whatever is necessary to get me to where I need to be. Um, it, uh, you know, there are certain things that I, I can't do anymore that I have to do differently. Um, but in terms of uh, where I am now, I, I've, I've been living with this for, I would say, about 20 years now. Um, I, I actually realized that there are still so many things that I can still do. Um, and again, it takes a little bit of help, it takes a little bit of patience, but uh, I travel. Um, uh, I've been to Rio, I've been to uh, Puerto Rico, I've been to Mexico. Uh, I still try to do everything that I would have done if I didn't have a limb girdle muscular dystrophy. Um, and so, um, in terms of getting around, in, in New York the subways are great. Uh, as long as you know what stations have elevators, you'll be fine. There's a way to call handicap accessible cabs. Um, and so, uh, I feel like, yeah, it, it's a little bit of a nuisance, but I I, I don't feel like there's there are things that I'm I'm not able to do that that I really wanted to do. So um, I that, that's kind of how I deal with it. I had no idea about LGMD. The the only thing that I knew about muscular dystrophy was that there was a telethon during Labor Day uh, that Jerry Lewis uh, I don't know if sponsored is the right word, but uh, it was a Jerry Lewis MDA Labor Day telethon, and that was kind of what my uh, uh, knowledge of uh, muscular dystrophy was at that point, so I had I really had no idea. W with the different support groups, I think my family, my friends are my support group. Uh, it was um, you know anytime I need to talk to someone, um, I have I have them around. Um, if they they really make me feel included in everything, uh, and. I feel a lot of them are actually physicians, so they 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 show a lot of empathy, and um, it, it in that sense I was lucky. Um, what was great though was meeting people, uh, other people that that do suffer from uh, LGMD2B, uh, and that was kind of eye-opening and refreshing, and uh, it because there's certain things that only folks that go through what I go through understand, and so. Um, uh, I think that 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 was great in and of itself, but um, in terms of outside support groups, I, I basically lean heavily on my my family and my friends. Well, I found the Jane Foundation. Someone had mentioned uh, the Jane Foundation to me uh, in terms of uh, them doing research, and when I looked into it a little bit further, uh, it, it turned out that they were concentrating on uh, 2B, which is exactly what I had. So I remember emailing them and I remember calling them to just kind of find out uh, what resources they had or what they knew about this disease. And um, I remember um, calling back and forth and just letting them know that I wanted to be involved with whatever uh, they were interested in doing, whether it was some sort of a clinical trial or whether it was some sort of a conference or, or anything to that effect, anything to help. And um, I'm actually really glad that I got in touch with them because uh, just this past Memorial Day, uh, I went to Dallas, they had the second conference. Uh, um, I missed the first one last year, but they had a second conference uh, and I was able to meet folks in the same position that I'm in. Uh, and, and it was great because there are certain things that only we can relate to. And so um, there were presentations, I, I gained a lot of insight into what kind of physical therapy would be good for me. Um, uh, I learned how to read my genetic sequencing, uh, which was uh, pretty cool. Um, and then uh, again, just meeting people, people where we could joke with each other and only we would understand, you know. Uh, it was, uh, it, it, that in and of itself was, was totally worth it. I'm just happy that, that we have uh, some sort of an organization that's really dedicated to helping us find a cure uh, for this disorder, you know, uh, it 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 really feels empowering to know that you're not alone, and uh, that so many people are trying so hard just to get to the bottom of this. So it's it's definitely empowering. It's uplifting. Uh, it, I think it gives everyone hope and optimism, and um, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just you, you can't thank them enough for this. Basically, the message that I want to portray is, you know. It's really scary when you first get diagnosed. There's so many unknowns. Um, 
you don't know heads from tails. And um, I've, again, been living with this uh, for the last 20 years. And I just want to let those that are newly diagnosed or scared or whatever it is, um, life isn't over. You know, there's still a lot you can do. Um, and, um, you know, these are the cards that we've been dealt. And it's basically up to us to make the most of it. So, um, you know, that's that's pretty much what my message would be. There's, don't get discouraged and uh, live life to the fullest.